Hey everybody, Troy from Maxima Racing Oil here at Folks Auto Machine in Norman, Oklahoma. Today we're going to be taking you through what we call our three-step process. This will involve the proper use of our assembly lube and assembly grease during engine assembly, and we're going to show you all the right areas to use it and the right ways to use it. And then we're going to be moving into break-in oil on the engine dyno. We're going to break the engine in, we're going to make some power pulls on break-in oil, and then we're going to be switching to our, um, our race engine oil. So today's subject is a 305 race saver going in Seth Shabester's sprint car. Uh, so follow along and uh, we'll be sure and provide you with a lot of instruction along the way. The first step in assembling our 305 race saver today is going to be installing the camshaft. We're going to be using Maxima assembly lube on cam bearings today and we'll take you into that process right now. So what I like to do is just put it out on the tip of my finger and apply it to the inside of the bearing. One of the advantages of the Maxima assembly lube over some of the other companies is that on the front of the bottle you'll see it says two times zinc. So what that is, that is a low temperature activated zinc, which is extremely important in a break-in process. We want to get that, that zinc activated early in the break-in process so we get that zinc protection um, ahead of everybody else. And for anybody that's ever used our assembly lube, you know how good it smells in here right now. It's got that distinct cinnamon smell that everybody, everybody knows. The next step in our process is going to be lubing up a camshaft. This engine uses a flat tap at camshaft per the rules, so it's extremely important to use the right assembly grease when lubing up a flat tap at camshaft. We all know how important that is. A Maxima assembly grease has the right high pressure additives. It has the right zinc in it for proper break in. The other thing that you're going to notice with this is it's going to disappear in your engine oil. You're never going to see this clumped up somewhere in the corner of a cylinder head, bottom of the oil pan, stopped up in an oil filter. It's going to emulsify with the engine oil because it's got a relatively low melting point. So you're going to see this stuff emulsify and it's going to disappear completely with oil. Unlike some of the other assembly products that, that do the job great, but they end up in the bottom of the oil pan and they kind of make a mess of your engine. So we don't want to use something like that. Maxima assembly lube or assembly grease is the way to go on a flat tap camshaft. So we'll get right into lubing up this camshaft. Now, one of the other things that uh, the assembly grease is great for is gear mesh. So we're gonna we're gonna lube up the distributor gear uh, liberally with the grease. Um, anytime we have a gear to gear situation, uh, the assembly grease is a great is a great product to lube up any gear to gear um, items and so we're gonna we're gonna load that we're gonna load those those teeth up uh, liberally with uh, with with assembly grease and then we're gonna move to the lobes and this is one of those situations where you almost can't use too much uh, a little common sense will go a long ways here but um, but a liberal amount on the lobes is going to be what we're looking for uh, for that proper break in. Next step in our process is going to be laying the crankshaft in our engine. We're going to start by using our assembly lube on the bearings. And I, honestly, I like using both products here. I like using assembly lube and assembly grease. And I'll walk you through the process of how I, how I like to use both products in this step. So I'm going to apply, apply a, a fairly liberal coat to the main bearings themselves. And then we're going to take that and just even it out across the, across the bearing, just using our finger. So then I'm going to switch to assembly grease. Now the area that I like to use grease is on, on the thrust face of the, cam, or the crankshaft. So on the edge of the thrust bearing, I'm going to put a little bit, a little bit of our assembly grease here, uh, just because I like for it to, to hang around a little bit more on the, uh, on the thrust face uh, through the break-in process. I think we get a better protection on the thrust face of the crankshaft when we use this. Our next step is we're going to be installing the, uh, the timing assembly. So I'm going to put just a little bit of our assembly grease just on the thrust face between the, uh, between the Torrington bearing and the front of the block. Just a little bit for a, a little bit of added protection in the beginning. Now that we have the camshaft, crankshaft, everything in the block, uh, camshaft is timed, degreed, all of that's been checked, balance are installed. Now it's time to move on to rods and pistons. So we're going to put together a rod and piston assembly now. We're going to use our assembly lube and we're going to coat the inside, inside of the pin bores. Work that around with our finger. 
Same thing on the uh, on the little end of the rod. We're gonna apply our assembly lube to the inside. And then we're going to install our wrist pin. Turn it over and we'll reinstall our C-clip and we'll be ready to install rods and pistons into the block. Okay, now that we have rods and pistons assembled, uh, the next step is gonna be we're gonna go ahead and lube up rod bearings, piston skirts, and get those installed to the engine and keep making progress. So what we're going to do is use our assembly lube and much like we did with main bearings, we're gonna, we're gonna put a, a liberal coating on, on each bearing, uppers and lowers. And then just like in the past, we're gonna spread that out. Get it all spread out evenly across the bearing. And then we're gonna lube, just put a, a little bit of oil on each skirt. So what we're gonna use, what's in this can is our 1030 break-in oil. Uh, it's, a, it's a good choice for, uh, for piston skirts. So we're just gonna coat each skirt. We're gonna try to keep it off the rings. We really don't need any lubrication on the rings themselves. So, so we're just gonna be lub lubing the skirts with our break-in oil. Okay, and these are ready to install. That'll be our next process. Next step in our process, we've got cylinder heads on the short block. Uh, we're ready to start installing valve train parts. So first thing I'm gonna do is take a little bit of assembly lube. We're gonna lube up our lifter bores. Um, won't take a whole lot here. We're gonna prime the engine before we ever start it anyway, so we're gonna get oil flow through these lifters. But just for initial assembly, I always like to put just a little bit of assembly lube inside, inside the lifter bore, just so that we're not putting everything together dry. All right, now we're gonna move over to the bench where our lifters are, and we're gonna coat each one of the bottom of the lifter with our assembly grease, the same, the same grease that we used on our camshaft. So what we're gonna do is put a, we're gonna put a pretty good, pretty good amount on the foot of the lifter before installing them in the block. These lifters do have added oiling as well, uh, so that's gonna help protect our camshaft even, even better always recommend finding a lifter that either has EDM oiling at the bottom or we have uh, auxiliary oil from a machine slot in the side of the lifter. Especially in any flat tappet situation, we want, we want all of the oil on the camshaft that we can possibly get without starving the rest of the engine. Now that we've got them all lubed, we're gonna start dropping them in the block. Okay, so we're to, the, to this point on the engine. We've got the injectors on it, uh, got lifters in it. We're ready to start installing valve train parts. So we're gonna start with push rods. Uh, push rods, we're going to use assembly grease on the tips. Uh, assembly grease is, again, a, a fantastic product for this application. It has all the right high pressure additives to protect uh, valve train parts during the break-in process on basically any engine. If we're, if we're talking about a solid roller with a lot of spring pressure, um, an engine that has horrible geometry, hor an engine that just has a tendency to burn up or beat up pushrod tips, assembly grease is the product to be using during assembly on, uh, on those products. So just gonna dip each end into, into the assembly grease, drop it in the engine. Now this engine does use two different links push rods, so, so we're dropping in just exhaust only right now. We're just putting just about that much on the tip. It doesn't need just a whole lot. You know, the valley of this thing is gonna be full of oil. It's gonna get a lot of lubrication on the bottom side. So we don't have to be super worried about what we're doing on the, on the bottom side. Uh, top side is very, very critical. This oil is gonna be a little bit slow to get to the top, a little slower. So we're gonna put a little extra on the top side of these. And then I'll grab intake push rods and we'll do the same thing. We'll just dip the tip. Okay, all of those are seated in the lifter, so go ahead and... Okay, so now we're ready to install rocker arms. I'm actually gonna apply a little bit of assembly grease to the tip of the valve also. It's a great protection point, even though this is a Solid lifter camshaft, we're gonna have to adjust the valves with a filler gauge. We're gonna wipe off a little bit of this lube when we adjust valves, but we're still gonna have that there 
uh, force and protection in the beginning anyway. Okay, we've got our engine pretty well assembled right here. We got eight quarts of 1550 break-in. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and prime it. We're gonna watch for oil flow out of the rocker arms and uh, also got oil pressure gauge hooked up. We're gonna watch that. We're gonna get to spinning right now. Okay, time to drop in the magneto. Also got a distributor gear. So again, we're gonna use assembly grease since we have gear to gear mesh. We did the same thing on our camshaft gear, so we're gonna do the same thing on our distributor gear. We're gonna load it up. Load it up with assembly loop, or assembly grease, I'm sorry. Okay, and now we're ready to drop it in. And just like that, she's in. So the engine's all complete. Going on the dyno right now. We're gonna be uh, making some steam here in just a little bit, so uh, we'll be back, just stay tuned. Okay, engine's all complete on the dyno, ready for our initial startup, so stick around, let's see if this thing starts. Okay, she runs. Okay, we got the 305 on the dyno, got her started up, got it broke in. We're up to about 160 degrees of uh, engine temperature right now, so valve cover's off, we're gonna go ahead and uh, run the valves, make sure everything's good there, then we'll be throwing valve covers back on this thing, and. Uh, revving her up and starting to make some power pulls. So right now we're gonna go ahead and run through the valves and see where we're at. Make sure nothing needs to be re readjusted. Okay, engine on the dyno. Gonna make the first pull now. Gonna sweep it from 4,000 to 6,500. Let's take a look and see what happens. Okay, nice clean test. Let's look at some data and see what we got. First test looks like fuel system's a little bit rich. We're gonna get to work on that and then we'll make some more power pulls here in just a little bit. Okay, we got about 15 to 20 minutes of warm up time on the engine. We've made six or seven dyno pulls on break-in. Uh, power's looking promising. Uh, normally we would go a little longer on the break-in oil, uh, but for today's purposes, we're gonna go ahead, we've got, got uh, break-in oil out and we're gonna go ahead and switch to RS1550 in this engine. This is what the customer's gonna race on. Uh, so our RS1550 is an extremely advanced full synthetic race oil. It is ester fortified. It, it is just an absolute Cadillac of engine oils. So we're gonna go ahead and get pouring it in right now. Okay, so first pull, break in oil out, RS1550 in. Uh, we changed nothing on the fuel system. We did nothing other than drain the oil and immediately put the RS in get the temperature right back up to 170 degrees starting temperature where we were before. And let's take a look at what, uh, what changed here. So if we look at torque at 4,500 RPM, we were, uh, we were 413 on break-in oil and uh, almost 420 at 4,500 on, uh, on the RS full synthetic. Um, over here, we also see a power, some power gain. The red is with uh, break-in oil. Uh, black is with uh, with RS1550. So as you can see, just with no changes, we've picked up a little bit of power on the top end. We've picked up a substantial amount of torque on the bottom side, and we just know that we're gonna get better protection and better performance out of RS1550. Okay, so here we are, end of day two at Folks Auto Machine here in Norman, Oklahoma. Seth Shabester's 305 race saver, all dynoed, ready to go in the race car, and uh, ready to go do some battle full of Maxima racing oil. The last step we're always gonna do for all of our engine builders, we're gonna provide our Maxima engine tags. So these are gonna be a spec tag. It's gonna, you're gonna fill out, you're gonna, you're gonna answer a lot of questions for your customer with this engine tag. You're gonna save yourself a phone call. These are, uh, these are free to our engine builders. So reach out to us, we'll get you a stack of these, save you some time on the phone with your customers. They'll have the answers to their questions right there in their hand once they take delivery of their engine. So. Thanks for watching everybody. Give us a call for more information or check out our website, MaximaUSA.com.